Hello Reef Breakers, welcome back to Drift Breakers Garage and another episode on the T6 build. Uh, this episode we're going to mount the Max ECU somewhere inside the car, uh, so we need to have a look and decide where we want to do it. Uh, the Max ECU is by far and away the most expensive piece of this puzzle, which is the T6 build. Uh, I got... where are we? Got the Max ECU uh, race. We have not only enough wire to make a loom completely from scratch, but I've also got, as mentioned in the previous video, a pre terminated harness for the Volvo T5 engine. So, with this, potentially we can just modify it to add the extra injector, the extra, co um, the extra coil pack. Uh, connection and then a few other little bits and bobs that aren't already in this like you know fuel pressure and I think e-throttle maybe quite a lot of others but the vast majority of the stuff in this is already here so even like the variable valve timing for intake and exhaust obviously all the rest of like the injectors and coil packs I've been through this a few times in a couple of the videos so I haven't decided yet whether we're gonna use the pre-terminated harness or make one from scratch uh, Ta-da! This is the Max ECU race. Now, I went for the race, which is one of the slightly higher models. I don't think it's a top one, but it's by no means uh, bottom of the line when it comes to Max ECU or any ECU. Uh, the, the main things once you, if you're looking at an ECU uh, for your car, the, the entry level ones will generally be four cylinder. You'll have a very limited selection of what you can do and what you can read from the engine. As you go up in the ranges of the various brands of ECU, you know, you've got Max and Link and Haltech um, and all the rest of it. You can have more cylinders, so you can have 6, 8, 10, 12 cylinders because there's more outputs on the ECU. Uh, and you also get more features in those like inputs and outputs. You get more of them, so you can, you can throw more information at the ECU to read for your tuning. Things like fuel pressure, air fuel ratio, Temperatures are pretty much absolutely temperatures and pressures for absolutely anything you could possibly want And that all helps you make a better tune uh, When when you're finished and you come to tune in the car You've got more tools at your disposal to make just uh, a safer uh, And sometimes you know a better you'll have more horsepower in your tune as well. So the race um, This gives me the capability not only have I got six cylinders but also with the variable valve timing for the intake and the exhaust um, and yeah just all the other things like I want to read fuel pressure uh, fuel pressure I, I, I might run the the e throttle through here and all sorts of different things well the first job with this is to mount it somewhere inside the car I've already decided I don't want it in the engine bay it can be too hot and wet and tight for space Giggity. But we want it inside the car, and then our main harness will come off here. We need to connect it to our double din as well in the, in the center console. So we just need it in a reasonable place where it's going to be safe, secure, relatively accessible in terms of like where we're routing cables and things. Um, and you know, I don't want it to be kicked by me or the passenger. I don't want to be hit when I'm loading up the car with anything. So behind the dash could be potential, but. It's very messy in there. Uh, there's lots of stuff with the HVAC system and, and so on. So we'll have a look, see if we can decide where we want to mount this. It's got the four little uh, mountain holes. So might be potential to get the rivet nut gun out again. We'll see, see what happens with that. And after that, we can start thinking about cutting holes in our bulkhead to run uh, the main harness if I want to mock that up. So on our T5, pre-terminated harness uh, where are we here so this goes to the ECU and then the other end goes to the engine so in between you've got the bulkhead firewall and then this is the grommet here uh, so you just need a, a reasonable amount of space between the ECU and the bulkhead you see it's not very long there you know I can move this I can move it down but then you start running out of space at the engine side, so it's just something that we need to be aware of 
Uh, we don't want to be extending a million cables, so it'll need to be kind of within this length here. So let's go and have a look, see where we can mount it. Right, brickers. We are in the inside of the brick. Um, I've got my flash on and I'm mega zoomed out just to, so we can see as much as we can. Uh, you can see I've got like, I've got the double din here, but it's not fitted. I literally just got it out of the box and shoved it in there. So it's not actually fitted. Um, I don't know if you can see. You have like options there, like it's on like a, a thing. So you can, you can like turn the screen and stuff. But I basically just want it mounted as far that way as possible. So when I hit third gear, we're not going to hit the screen, even if but slam it. Same with first. So we're good there. Anyway, uh, we want to mount this lovely Max ECU race. And I don't really want it anywhere in the on the driver's side. I know the stock. Volvo location is in there. Although I have uh, unplugged it at this point. But I kind of want it in this general area. I looked under here and all the HVAC system and the aircon stuff, it's so compact and complicated and busy. I don't want to remove the dash. I don't want to remove everything behind there. It's going to open up a can of worms and it never goes back together again. And what I want to do is just get everything mounted just with everything how it is, with all the stock dash in. I like how it looks. I like sitting in here. It's a nice place to be. It's not too race car at the moment. I've still got my door cards and stuff. This may change when I get a cage, but I just want to get like this mounted in a sensible place where it's not going to get kicked too much by a passenger and it's in a secure but accessible-ish location. I want to have some access to, you know, these, so it's not too difficult. So I'm thinking like in here, in here, you know, maybe on the side here, because we've also got to think about the main harness going through the bulkhead into the engine bay as well. I know I can cut new holes, that's not really a problem, but just for location, you know, I mean, even in here, oh, don't wanna, <laughs> don't wanna see that sticker. See that sticker instead, look. It says labor of love. It's a labor of love and it's shiny and sparkly. Forgot about that sticker, hang on. Ah, that's better, we'll cover it up. Ooh, look. This is me getting just distracted. Backfire Club stickers from Swedish Boost Mafia. We've even got, oh my God, what have I just found? Well, I've got the Grand Grand Talk event that we went to in this last year. No, we didn't go in this, did we? Went in my mate's brick. Anyway, what have I just found, man? Just found two DFC stickers. That's ridiculous. You know these DFC stickers? Shiny. Hmm. Not sure what to do with these. They're a little bit irreplaceable at this point. I might just keep them. Anyway, that's a story for another day. What if I mounted the ECU like this? It would probably have to be sideways. It doesn't really go. But if I did it this way and then cut holes in the back for the wires to come out, that could be an option, but then the wires aren't very accessible. If I do it this way, that's not gonna work. But maybe, just maybe this way. Because once, if I cut a hole, if I cut a hole in the back of the glove box for these, this is too complicated. Because there's not really any space at the back of the glove box either. And it's like fabric and stuff. It's like Alcantara things, or whatever you call it. You know, you know what I mean? I don't, know, I don't know if like cutting this will be any good idea or not. Hmm. Yeah, glove box could work. DFC stickers, man. Hang on. Let's 
mucho. I mean, under the passenger seat is not a terrible idea. Under the passenger seat could potentially work. Because then you just route your, your wires like along here where there's harness stuff anyway. I don't want to like do something where I'm going to have to remove it all when I do the cage. Or when somebody else does the cage for me. Um, but we could route the wires along the transmission tunnel here. So under the under the passenger, passenger seat is good. Because even if I get a bucket seat, under the passenger seat is still a good area. Oh, I think I might be sold on this because it's nice and hidden. We've got good access to it. It's safe. And we've got, it's close enough to route the wires, I believe. And we've got easy access to in here where our like double din unit is as well. I think I'm talking myself into putting the Max ECU race underneath the passenger seat. Let's have a quick look in here, I think. I've never even thought about under the passenger seat before, honestly. But there you go. That's why we that's why we do these things and just talking out loud and then things happen, you know. See there's like options. Like that's just plastic, I mean I can't mount to that. Like the transmission tunnel here, there's a lot of wire in here, but might be able to move that or delete it all together. I don't know what it's for. Here is like the passenger foot kick plate. I don't really want to, that's where passenger feet go. So I don't really want to put it there. So it'll be more like up here, but I mean, I'm even struggling just to get it, get it. I'm struggling to get it up. I'm struggling to get it up there. So, and like there's no space here. I've got to remove all this like HVAC stuff. And again, I'm just opening cans of worms where, you know, a half an hour job could turn into a, weekend ordeal so then there's here as well I've got me like sketchy wiring for me underglow here I don't like hate that but it's still just yeah it could be an option I don't hate it there but again like when you're drifting the passengers feet can be kicking it you know because of all the g-forces because of all the speed i'm gonna have because of all the power i've got and because i've got loads of grip because i've got loads of power right i think we might remove the passenger seat and have a look at an appropriate place to mount the ecu let's do that i've just laid out the pre-terminated harness uh, over the engine, just roughly, you know, the coil packs and injectors are, are at the engine. That's as rough as you can possibly get, really. Just to see what kind of length I've got all the way to the plug to go into the ECU. Uh, just to see the length of it, and you can see when the coil packs are where, roughly where they're supposed to be. I'm all the way back here. If I go down, it's dirty dog. I'm, I'm at the seat, I know I've gone up instead of down um, but it looks like the length is pretty good I'm gonna have to be efficient with where I root it but I think potentially it's long enough to uh, cut a hole somewhere in the bulkhead which may be down there somewhere because up here is all HVAC stuff on the inside of the car so it'll be quite far down where I put the hole, but then I just route it down the side of the, the transmission tunnel and then underneath the passenger seat. So with our uh, mounted battery, it's funny, I was just saying, I wanted to be able to move the, the seat back so I can remove said seat. And then literally hours later, I'm actually removing the seat uh, to mount the ECU. So Brickers, I love my garage, I'm blessed. I love the fact that I've got space to work at the back. However, I haven't got loads of width uh, here. You know, I can't even really open the door very well. And I'm hitting my uh, Volvo 360 transaxle gearbox prop shaft thing. Uh, my plan is I'm gonna unbolt 
the seat, the four bolts, and then it's gonna get dumped backwards where there's already the well, driver's seat in this dumping ground area back here. Just in that area there. I don't need the seat out of the car. I'll just unbolt it, move it back over, and then we'll have some floor area, which we're, I believe we'll need to clean. And then we'll have a look and see how much space we've got to mount an ECU. Just got one more bolt to undo, which is the one in the back corner there. I haven't moved the seat at all, and I've managed to undo the two front ones and that one in that corner as well. And I haven't moved the battery, and I haven't removed the battery, so that's a good test of whether I can get the seat out without removing the battery at all. Uh, the only thing is with these bricks, if you've ever removed the seat from these bricks, then you'll know that uh, you've got to do a bit of a dance to get the thing out because there's, a, there's like a stud in a real thing. So you've got to like push it back and then up, or forward then up, or back and then forward and then up, and that, it's stupid. Anyway, I'll get this last bolt out and we'll start jiggling. Come on. I think we're out. Got him. Uh, there's a slight reason why uh, I wasn't moving the seat all the way forward. Uh, one is the hydro is slightly in the way. But also, this seat does not like sliding backwards and forwards. It takes all of the efforts and it really just doesn't like moving. So I'm kind of in a nice, the seat is in a nice position. It's not too far back for the battery, not too far forward for the hydro. It's just a nice position. I'd like to keep it that way and I proved I have managed to just undo the four bolts quite easily. So let's start jiggling around and see if we can remove this seat. was the easiest seat removal I've ever done. For the record, it's a slide back and then it comes up. Did one side, then the other, and I don't need to undo the seat belt from it, hopefully. Oh, the heated seat wire. The heated seat needs to be unplugged. Move you. Whoop. Floor space. Right, so here we've got our area. We've just removed the passenger seat and put it backwards. Uh, here's where we've just mounted the battery. There's an area there which could work, uh, but I don't think I'm going to use that because of this here. That's just all in the way. But we've got an area here under the seat. We've got a little valley. If we remove this HVAC system because it's just roots hot air to the pa rear passengers feet and I don't even have rear seats never mind rear passengers so if we get rid of this uh, and the, the wiring and we've got this lovely little valley for the, the ECU to sit in so look at that it even looks like it's gonna fit really well might get the riv nut gun back out with some small like M5, five, six, four, little little bolts 
Uh, so this floor under here isn't completely flat. So I think if we just remove this air track bit and then we'll see what we're working with, see if we can just mount it to the to the floor here. And then we've got, got the ECU pointing in the right direction for the wires to come out and go through the bulkhead. See the mounting for the, the seat, the four bolt holes for the seat, they're all on the same level, the flat and the square. So not only the flat, they're also square. And it makes mounting a bucket seat in here very easy. I fully over-engineered mine. I've got like square, like flat, uh, not flat stock, like square stock. But I've just got two of those and they're bridged with two pieces of metal, two flat stock, that, and then I'm bolted the seat uh, underneath. It's way too heavy, like if you're talking race car, what I've done is way too heavy. But in terms of simplicity, it's brilliant and strength, you know. That is never, ever, ever going anywhere. So yeah, uh, mounting bucket seats in bricks is quite easy. Um, I'm sure I could use less material and lighter material and all the rest of it. There may be even things for sale on the internet that make it easier and uh, lighter. But I've got a very simple and strong solution to mounting bucket seats in bricks. And that's all thanks to it being very simple from the factory. Nice and flat, nice and square. Anyway, let's start pulling apart stuff so we can see if we can get this ECU mounted. Ow. That was easy. Whoops. Sorry, break out. This little plate's come out as well. You see it's looking a little bit better now, I've just given it a really quick hoover and wipe down, nothing too serious. So now we're going to put our ECU there I think. I might cut off this here, there's a little stud there. Um, before, after, right, got some little bolts, M6 wouldn't fit so I think these are M5s. I'll just put that in there with a little washer. That should work nicely. Good, it's an M5. The roof nut is just shy of seven mil, so I'm gonna drill seven mil holes in the floor. So I've now got the ECU on the flat piece of floor, so I'm just gonna mark these four holes so I know where to drill. I didn't have a pen uh, that would go through the holes just to mark out the, the thing and instead of measuring just used a, a three mil drill bit just to mark the holes so you can see on each hole we have a little silver dot where I've drilled so we'll turn those into seven mil holes. Rave nut gun, my new favorite thing in the whole world. Right. So we've already primed our rave nut gun with the M5 end on it. So just screw our M5 rave nut on the end there. And then we'll just flap it in the hole if it's big enough. I need to make it a little bigger, yeah. Need a little love tap. 
There we go. Ow! Ah! That really hurt. Don't nip yourself with a rev nut gun. Ah! Ah! Fuck you, rev nut gun. Okay, that was a little bit more emotional than it needed to be, but uh, the ECU is mounted on the floor nicely. So we're kind of ready to put the seat back in, but we're not gonna do that right now. You see that? Not going anywhere. Then maybe I should have had a little bit more mechanical sympathy for a, an M5 thread that's made out of aluminium, but never mind. ECU's in there. Uh, we'll be ready to kind of plug the harness in, I suppose, but we're not going to do that right now because we have to make a little trip to Stella Blast. Uh, we are going to get the wheels powder coated in a mystery colour. And the mystery colour is from Prismatic Powder. Don't let me forget that. I will forget that. I need to take that to the powder coater. I've already got the powder on the shelf. Anyway, in order to take the wheels to the powder quarter, we do actually need to remove them from the car. So in order to do that, just to give myself a little bit more space, we're gonna do the juggling of the cars. So outside of the garage, we've got the Audi, which is in the way. So we'll move the Audi out the way and then we'll push the 340 back out the way. The 340 does roll quite well, all the way at the front of the drive and then we'll get the brick out there and then my driveway is a little bit wider than this garage so we'll have a little bit more space for the jack to jack it up and take all four wheels off and then we'll put some standard chip wheels on uh just to you know uh make things a little bit worse for myself it's actually blowing a gale it's about it said about uh 60 mile an hour winds i think today so it's going to be windy out there. Anyway, it's not going to do itself, so let's get to it. Right, breakers. Let's just turn everything off so we can have a chat. Well, that was a Formula One pit stop style wheel change. Just changed the four wheels over on the brick. Just put any old whatever was at the top of the pile went on the brick, don't really care. I was getting so windy out there, you've seen the phone blow over a couple of times. Fan him out of breath from manhandling the brick and trying to push it. The 340 rolls so nicely, but the, the 960, man, that does not like to roll. It doesn't even like to roll straight. 
I know there was one tire that was kind of flat, but the welded diff and things just doesn't help at all. And the car is completely full of rubbish, making it a bit heavier. Anyway, right, we are off to Stellar Blast. Uh, the kind of the sister company to Stellar Performance who did my welding, did the downpipe, did the uh, exhaust manifold. Uh, Stellar Blast is the powder coating uh, business. So I'm off there now to drop the wheels off and I have actually remembered the powder coat from Prismatic Powders, happy days. Uh, I'm not gonna reveal the color at this point um, or give you any clues. Um, however, I just, which way am I going? I think I'm going this way. Hello. It's my neighbor, he's uh, a nice guy. Um, he has lots of Porsches. I don't know if you'll see him on there. Anyway, uh, I got distracted. Yeah, just wanted to say something about the colour really of my banded steelies, how they are now, because if you're an OG of of, of me, of Drift Brigger, um, you'll know that I had chrome, just silver chrome for, for many years. Um, it was kind of what put us on the map and I think the chrome banded steelies along with my stance and the fact that I used 17s um, and had them banded and stuff you know I think it was a big part of having the following that I do on Instagram a few years ago well I had them done chrome twice and then I've also had an, another wheel replaced that I bent badly by Usher Engineer and they welded as a replacement wheel so they've been on a bit of a journey but essentially you know these wheels are almost 10 years old now and they're still straight enough, honestly. Uh, I bought the, the wheels new and they were welded very professionally by um, a guy called Jim Alonso in Scarborough, who is a, just a genius at fabrication. But anyway, they've stood the test of time brilliantly. They've never, ever leaked. Never even thought about leaking. They've taken some hits, so, you know, they might not be 100% straight, but they've tried as well. I know they're heavy. But anyway, I kind of... I went to this rose gold copper chrome, which uh, Rascal Baz powder coated for us, and I love the color. Even today, I still love the color, and they've stood like two years of drifting, and they still look absolutely mint. So the, the it's difficult to powder coat steel wheels because just the rust gets through. But respect to Rascal Baz, he did a great job with the powder coating, and they've lasted a few years. They've taken some mega drifting abuse and still mint i still love the color but there's just a slightly different direction i want to go in just want to the rose gold copper chrome thing i just i didn't like the kind of the warm it's so difficult to explain the warm kind of hue i wanted to get away from that and i wanted to get them done in a in a color that might be able to match with some things maybe like potentially have a livery uh, that I can match up to the wheels I think it'll really finish the car off but it's a it's a color that I've, I've always wanted I've always considered as well uh, as well as like a few colors around it it was difficult to find the color I wanted um, I had to ship the, the powder I've got from prismatic powders from uh, America so I'm gonna drop them off at Stella Blast really excited to get them done it's just one of these things that's gonna increase my motivation to get the car finished when I when I get the wheels back and they're super shiny uh, th there are winter tires on there are winter tires on the uh, on the steelies at the minute just kind of placeholders I will turn them into smoke at some point but I think for when I get the wheels powder coated I'm gonna take some different tires to sell a blast for them to fit because I've got some like grippier semi-slick like low profile tires which I think will look really good on them so I might put some different tires on but we'll see that's still to be decided uh, so I will see you when we arrive at Stella Blast
Street Breakers. That is the wheels dropped off at Stella Blast. Give them a follow. I'll we'll link the Instagrammers in the description. Hoping they're gonna update me with uh, some photos and stuff of the the process or how the how they're looking and stuff. Um, I might come back to to dr drop off some more or should I say a less suitable tyres. At the moment I've got like the winter tyres on and the fit and I'm gonna turn them into smoke and because they're not so grippy it might be good to to like test the car out, to test the engine out once once I've got the T6 running instead of like immediately going for maximum grip and snapping loads of stuff. I'm quite happy just to like melt some winter tyres. Uh, but I've got some grippy boys which I know will go on the 9Js on the rear, which is what, what I've kind of got them for, but for the front, I need to check at home to see what size they are, but I think they're like 205, 40, 17, which is just silly to, really silly to put on a 10J. Um, even if I was just doing it for like Stancy Boy points just to reveal the wheel color to you guys. Um, the, the brick will look absolutely freaking sick with, uh, really low profile tyres on those 17s with the car being like slammed and all the cambers and all the rest of it in the new colour but uh, I might have to have a look at my my absolutely massive tyre wall at home and see uh, which tyres I fancy putting on so I might just stick with what we've got on there at the moment even though when I reveal the wheels everyone's going to be like oh, why you got winter tyres on anyway Brickers yeah, as I said, I'm rambling. Uh, I'll leave it there. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Peace.